Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It is Saturday, July 27th, 2019, and we do have a few things to talk about today. In the Eastern Pacific, starting off, Tropical Depression number 6E. The E is for Eastern Pacific. If we click on this, you see the next several days could start to prove a little interesting for our friends over here in Hawaii, off to the left side of the map here. Forecast to become a hurricane and move generally to the west-northwest with time. Water temperatures out this way a little warmer than they should be overall. So we will definitely want to keep an eye on this and see how this evolves. I will focus on it each day over the next several days that I can do so. I do have to travel starting on Tuesday. So Tuesday might be a little difficult, but Monday and yeah, Wednesday as well. But we'll be on top of this one way or the other. And hey... It's not like I'm the only person out there that you can depend on for tropical information, but we definitely want to keep an eye on that. In the Atlantic, eh, nothing yet, but I am starting to think we may see something try to get going yeah, somewhere in this area over the next week or so. Yeah, it's a little bit of a chance of that anyway, more so than we have seen in recent days and maybe even recent weeks, especially coming out of the deep tropics. First, before we get to the Atlantic, let's take a look in the Eastern Pacific. Here is TD number 6, E for East Pacific, like I mentioned. And again, this will be moving off while it slowly organizes in the Southeast Pacific. Uh, in the general vicinity of the Hawaiian Islands, at the very least, if it becomes a hurricane, it could certainly send some higher waves your way. And uh, you know, definitely pay attention to that if you have travel plans out there. You want to be mindful of any weather that could have an impact. You know, nothing serious right now. There's no threat or problem or no need to cancel any vacation plans, but it is hurricane season. There's something trying to develop. It's a depression already, forecast to be a hurricane. So be aware of that if you're heading out to Hawaii or you are there already. All right, farther to the south and east, another disturbance trying to get its act together more energy coming across from Central America. The product and the results of this uh, fairly strong, very strong convectively coupled Kelvin wave that I've talked about often recently, again, it's like that fertilizer truck analogy that it passes by and it leaves in its wake a more fertile background state for things to develop. More moisture, more vorticity in the atmosphere, the ability of the atmosphere to spin um, there's one way to look at that energy overall. It's like a boost. You know, like I said, it's kind of like getting a, a drink of Red Bull for the tropics. In the Atlantic, that Kelvin wave also you know, came all the way across and now somewhere over Africa apparently. And in its wake, look, there's a lot more shower and thunderstorm activity. Just starting here in the eastern Pacific, something here, there, there, a little flare up there, here, and here. So quite a bit of activity overall than what we have been seeing and while there is certainly still a Saharan air layer influence up here it is a little bit more to the north now and we can see that on this product from the University of Wisconsin site the Saharan air layer analysis a majority of the strongest SAL influence as we call it is farther to the north you know getting closer to 20 north now uh, for the southernmost extent of that influence. In fact, this tropical wave and the associated overall moisture with it really putting a dent in the Saharan air layer, a little bit more dusty dry air passing through the Antilles, the greater Antilles there. Um, but we are changing things slowly but surely. That's an interesting little impulse. Some of the modeling showing that that becomes you know, a little bit more organized in the far north Atlantic but nothing out there really to be concerned about just yet. In fact, you can see that, what we call vorticity signature here on this other product, an additional product from the University of Wisconsin site. And that's what I'm looking for. Do any of these little areas show up as trying to become round and bundling of the energy? In the tropics, that is a sign of a tropical cyclone forming. And, uh, and especially in the tropics. You still you can get that in the mid-latitudes with a very potent storm system. But a lot of time in the middle latitudes, the energy is stretched out, like you see here, up here, for example, up in the westerlies. Down in the tropics, when you have energy that is stretched out, kind of like a grapevine, 
Then you see that these little areas, these blobs form and concentrate that energy. And in the case of the southeastern Pacific, that is happening. And you get development. And so we look and see, are there other areas in the tropics to watch? And yes, right here, this is one. This is associated with a very vigorous tropical wave, some more energy here, and even more near the coast of Africa, and more over Africa. So, you know, as we progress through the next several days and weeks, the natural tendency for climatology, looking back 100, 150 years, we naturally see an increase in activity normally over time. Now there are years when you have a very strong El Nino event in the Pacific or a cooler Atlantic than it should be and other, other factors that you don't get much of an uptick in activity. And some years that uptick in normal activity coincides with a very favorable background state and you get a hyperactivity, right? You can also have hyper low activity like we did in 2013 as an example. Um, but we're almost there. It's July 27th, so only four days left until August begins. And then it's really about three weeks until we would normally expect an increase. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see something ahead of time. And maybe some of what we're seeing percolating in the eastern Pacific here and with some of these systems are signs that things are getting ready to change. So let's look at the modeling the European, the ECMWF, this is from today's run, the 12Z run, and this goes out the next seven days. This is the initial condition, 12Z, Saturday, July 27th, that means it was initialized at 8 a.m. Eastern Time, or 12Z, or another way to look at it is UTC, Universal Time Coordinate. Um, watch, too, some of this energy up here, especially this guy right here in the North Atlantic coming around the top the north side of that big subtropical ridge out here as I go through these frames now these are every 24 hours that's the resolution that we get for free on the public side of the European uh, larger weather companies pay a lot of money to access finer detailed graphics and I like to show what uh, Levi Cowan has put together here from tropicaltidbits.com He's taking what's available from their FTP information, their public files, and putting it into a map that we can all see. We call that map visualization, among other things. So hats off to Levi for providing this. So there's the ridge uh, and these different impulses. Now keep your eye on this as well down here. All right, so now I'm going to take the telestration away. This is this morning. This is Sunday morning. And you see what happens. Look at that piece of energy right there. A mid-latitude storm, you know, over fairly warm water. We'll have to watch and see if this tries to. Let's we'll see if we can snag a satellite picture of that tomorrow. Let's do that, and especially on Monday. Uh, meanwhile, that energy down in the tropics there, coming into the Windward Islands, the Lesser Antilles as a whole, and the Eastern Pacific, another area trying to bundle together. So it's changing, people. It's coming slowly but surely. It is getting there. 48 hours out. This is Monday morning. Now that is a potent little storm right there uh, heading towards, you know, the western parts of uh, Europe there, right? France and um, maybe the English Channel, just north of Spain and Portugal, which is right there. I'm trying to remember all my geography. But that's, that's a heck of a vorticity signature, wouldn't you say? So what is that? Monday morning? Let's make sure... Monday, I tweet about that. I want to see what that looks like. That's going to be interesting. Meanwhile, the energy off the East Coast here slowly, finally goes away. After that front came through and gave us the nice weather, the lower dew points, etc., well, that energy is eventually going to just wash out, and this ridge is going to set back up, and then we have to, we have to really start to watch these tropical waves. And look, you can just start to see it in the curvature of these wind barbs down here. There's the tropical wave in there. Other energy back out over the open Atlantic. But that's the one that I'm interested in, in there passing through the islands. Uh, 72 hours out. And again, let's just focus on what's happening right here. That's 72 hours. So this would be Tuesday morning. Wednesday morning. Now it's getting in to the southeastern Bahamas. Fairly innocuous looking. Thursday morning. Starting to try to make a little bit of a flare-up. And you see what's happening, right? There's really not much 
front dangling across the uh, offshore waters of the east coast anymore. The ridge is trying to build back in. And on the southwest part of that ridge, something is trying to take shape. A very typical location in my experience. All right, so this is 120 hours out this coming Thursday morning. At day six, Friday morning, finally day seven, Saturday morning, about a week away, right here off the coast of Florida, the northern Bahamas, etc., maybe a flare-up that at that time would probably warrant uh, an outlook from the Hurricane Center. I mean, a lot of people would be talking about this. So we got to watch this closely and see what happens. At the very least, rainfall, beneficial, etc., for some areas through here, perhaps. Ah, who knows? The wave may just decide to go more this way. It's This is not gospel, as they say. It's not, this is what will happen. This is the operational version of the ECMWF model. There are lots of other models. There are perturbations of the models. This is just something to say, oh, okay, let's keep an eye on that. But the first part, very positive, some beneficial rain for parts of the islands, all right? And you notice, too, here at day uh, seven, more energy trying to approach from the east that we need to keep an eye on. And this is valid next that Saturday, August 3rd. Now, I am traveling starting Tuesday over to Oklahoma uh, via Dallas. Then we're going to get a rental vehicle. Our friend Brent, our partner down in the Virgin Islands. Carrie's coming up from Houston. Derek from South Dakota. And we're all going to converge here in Oklahoma City and go west from there over to a little town called Elk City where we will be testing our weather balloon project on Wednesday. Uh, that being said, if something tries to pop up, you know, this is Thursday, or I'm sorry, this is Saturday, I'd be back in Wilmington by this day. And so we launch on the 31st for our test. If we have to and something's going to try to develop, we'll just grab our payload and start driving back. Screw the return plane ticket. Brent will have the rental truck. Off we go. We'll worry about that later, though. But it is interesting in all my experience when I see this large ridging and what is out here as well, warmer than normal water temperatures, and on the southwest part of that ridge, there could be some trouble. Down here on the southwest part as well, interesting times ahead. Uh, it could just mean something to watch, and okay, didn't do anything, or the beginning of a long, I don't know, three months, August, September, October. We'll have to just wait and see how it all plays out. All right, uh, real quick, seen lots of people on Twitter mentioning that they have seen the documentary from last year, the 2018 edition of Tracking the Hurricanes. You can get your hands on a copy either through Amazon. Well, it's digital. I don't make DVDs of it anymore. But go to hurricanetrack.com slash 2018. I'll put the link in the description of the video. And um, you can either rent it or purchase it through Amazon Prime Video, or using PayPal, it is available on YouTube, uh, and you can buy it on PayPal, and I'll send you the link. So you either get it through Amazon Prime Video and all the devices that play that, or I personally will send you the link after you purchase it on PayPal. But that's how you do it, Amazon or YouTube, through HurricaneTrack.com slash 2018 and thanks for all the people a couple people emailed me several people have mentioned me on twitter and it just makes me feel so grateful that you appreciate what i did because it's a work of art at the same time a representation and a showcase of the accomplishments that my team and i have had not only last year but the 14 years leading up to it with our remote camera and our weather sensing projects that we've done um, just an extraordinary look at perseverance and innovation and technology and how we got closer to a hurricane, namely the fierce Category 5 Michael, but not to you know put any lessening on what happened with um, uh, Florence. Obviously a major event for North Carolina, but the ferocity of Michael and what we were able to capture using that one little camera. Now, and here's my point, I'll wrap it up, because of the success of the video, I mean, I'm not making millions of dollars. I mean, come on, let's be real. But I appreciate the success it's had, and it's literally helping to fund even more equipment. I didn't produce the, the film to get rich. 
That's not going to happen unless I get a Hollywood deal or whatever, but that's a pipe dream. I did it as a way to showcase what we produced and hopefully to help fund the future. And it's working. And I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. It's the weekend. It's movie time. It's a real-life movie, but check it out nonetheless. All right, lots to keep up with over the next few days. I'll be on top of it. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon with more. Thanks for watching from whatever device you happen to be tuning in from. I appreciate it as always. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again sometime tomorrow.